So you're probably already very familiar with how you set up a chat to PDF chat with your documents using a vector database. But in today's video, what I want to go over is how do you build on top of this? Because these sort of retrieval chains are really good for answering very small, simple questions like what is the profit? What is the salary for this position? Very simple questions, but it falls. But where it actually falls over is when you're trying to give it big, complex questions to do. And at the end of the day, this is sort of where the value is. You know, if you can only do short, simple questions that a control F on a document can, you know, a search can find very quickly, then sort of what's the point? You want to be able to do complex queries, take all the relevant data and then actually produce a intelligent output. So let me show you how we're going to supercharge our retrieval agents. So this is basically what happens when we do a retrieval, right? So we've got our vector database, we've got our embeddings. Basically, the user asks a total a question, what is the total salary offering that goes through an embedding? This is turned into embedding, it goes to the vector database, and it finds the, the most similar vectors to that. That goes back through a, a vector embedding, so we actually get the, the strings. That goes to an open AI call, so it passes the context and the question, and then it says, right, okay, now, try and answer this question and it'll answer this question right but the the issue is is when we start giving complex questions because with this we tend to only return three or four of the the closest vectors so say you've got loads of different aspects within that question that are targeting the profit gross income net loss taxation right it's only going to be able to find they're the closest vectors to a few of those. And it actually might not find anything at all because it might see taxation, profit, gross premium, everything all in one, vectorize that and see, okay, this as a whole question isn't actually anywhere as close to any of these individual items, right? So what we need to do is actually break this down. So we have a complex query, goes into a master agent, which then breaks down this big complex questions into the small queries like what is the profit? What was the loss for this year? What was net income? And then when all, when all that information comes back, then the master agent looks at all that information in the context of the question and can provide a better response, right? So an example of this would be, you know, can you provide me an analysis of our EBITDA margins for the past year, segmented by each product line, and compare it with the respective capital expenditures for each product? Also, identify any major disparities between the two. So this is a question that you, know, you would ask your accountant if you're putting together your board pack or whatever. But if you ask this, you know, this question to a to a knowledge base just like this, it is going to fall over. It's going to not bring you back anything close to, to what, you know, an actual accountant would for this, right? So what we need to do is actually break it down into its summary parts. So, the, you know, one of the questions would be, what were our EBITDA margins for each product lines over the past year? What were the capital expenditures for each product line over the past year? Are there any product lines where the EBITDA margin seems significantly out of proportion to its capital expenditures? So we take all of these, and I mean, even this one, right? This can be broken down even more. It's going to be broken down in, even to more sub-questions. Take all of these, pass it back with this big question into the master agent, and then that will be able to actually do the analysis there. And with this, you can either go, you can do it asynchronous, so you do all these questions at the same time, or you can do it step-by-step. Step. So a lot of like financial calculations will require you to do step-by-step. Step. So you'll have to find something, then do an analysis analysis on it then go out and find something so you can either so you can sort of do it in a queue or we can do it in we can go and grab them all at the same time so now i'm going to show you actually like how we can do something like this in Langchain. i have to say this like field is still fairly in the development stages so there isn't a lot of architecture actually built up around this at the moment but things are starting to come out to make this sort of thing a lot easier right so this is where we come into the world of retrievers so this is how do we retrieve this data and actually there's a lot of different retrievers so like the, the normal one is this vector store backed retriever right so wh where you just have a question you send it into a vector store and it comes back what we're going to be looking at is the multi-query retriever today, right? So distance-based vector database of queries in a high-dimensional space that finds sim similar embedded documents based on distance, but retrieval may produce different results with subtle changes in the query wording. So even, you know, say you don't even have a complex question, so you have a huge vector database, 
and you ask it a question. But if you change some of the words in the question to the same meaning, it actually might pull out different parts from the vector database than the other, you know, very similar but slightly different word of question. So this is where they're getting at with this, but we can actually adapt it to use it to, to break down these complex questions. So let's have a look how we it works. So just in a Google Colab, we should do some import, set your environment API key, and then we are gonna load in. So I'm just gonna load in one of my articles from Medium. We're gonna load it in, we're gonna split it. I've got a fairly small chunk size. If you've got a bigger document, obviously increase the chunk size. Don't go over a thousand though, that, otherwise you're gonna hit context windows. Then we're gonna pass it into a vector DB. We're just gonna use Chroma, an open source vector database. And then we, this is where we're going to create the retriever, right? So we're going to set our LLM to chat open AI, and then we're going to set the retriever to this multi-query retriever from LLM. And then we're going to set the, the retriever as the actual the vector database. So you can do this logging just to be able to see the intermediary steps that are happening. So here, what is VY5? And let's have a look at the questions that it does. So basically what this does is it takes this question passes it into a large language model and then finds all the different separate all the separate questions so here you can see can you provide information about vi finance features how does vi work so these are all very similar questions but the actual wording is and the words used you know purpose and capabilities or what's its functionalities features information they're all different and they're going to be able to hit the, the different aspects of this large large multi-dimensional space and then if we actually print the the document certs and then come back with six so what what this basically does is in parallel it will ask the database right each of these questions as a as a separate query it will then get back a bunch of vectors and then it will look at the difference between all these vectors that it's gotten back it wants to get the unique set of vectors over, over this space. So I've actually just gone into the, the Langchain code just to show you guys actually. So this is the Langchain code for the multi-query retriever. And this is actually the prompt that they give it basically. You're an AI language model. Your task is to generate three different versions of the given question to retrieve relevant documents from a data. So this is it fairly simple. It's basically just getting this question, passing it to a large language model and getting better questions or more different questions out. So then we can actually use this and put this into a chain. So we can create a retrieval chain. And then with this retriever variable, right, we can pass in the type of retriever we want. So how we're actually gonna retrieve this information. So if we run this, and then we put the query and we run the chain, we'll see the info, so the different questions because we've enabled logging. And then it brings back the different, the, the, and it brings back the, the response. So this is just to, to show you sort of what's possible with already the inbuilt functions of Langchain. So you can either use this and modify this, or you can build sort of your own. It wouldn't be that difficult. You just have to create a chain before you actually pass it into the, the retrieval QA chain to break a bunch of questions. But what you can actually do, say you don't want it just to do similar. Say you actually want to break it down into the different sections like we want to. What we can actually do is implement this chain ourselves, right? So to actually supply our own prompt, basically we just have to, you can come to this document and basically just copy and paste, and then you want to change this prompt template. So you can say something like, you're an AI model assistant, and please break down this complex question into the simple questions. And then it's very similar. You just pass that into a retriever, and then you can create a retrieval Q&A chain, or you can just query it like this, right? So retriever.get relevant documents. There's a lot of ways to, to, to use these, but you can pass this into whatever train as, as the actual retriever. So with this, you can actually go away and, and build like a SaaS for, you know, chat to PDF, because all these chat to PDF SaaS solutions out there are just using very simple vector search. You could do one specifically for accountants where they put in a bunch of documents, Excel sheets, and they can ask really complex questions. And behind the scenes, you're breaking down those complex questions, getting all the data, passing it back, and then making the, the AI with all this extra data answer, answer those questions. So that is something that could be incredibly useful. But there's also a bunch of different other retrievers as well. So we've got stuff like contextual compression, which basically compresses the stuff that comes out of the, the vector database. We've got an ensemble retriever. So this actually is 
uses multiple different retrievers. So say you want a multi-query retriever, a contextual compression retriever, so it will go away and do the retrieval with other retrievers and then put together the best answer. We've got a parent document retriever as well. We've got stuff like self-querying, which is using filters and metadata in, in your vector database as well. So you can see an example here. What did Bar say about foo? It will actually see this query constructor and see, oh, okay, so the, the, the filter is we're going to filter the author by bar. So that will filter the metadata and then we'll bring back things similar to fit. We've got stuff like time-weighted vector stores as well. So this has sort of like a knowledge decay, so stuff that isn't brought out of the vector database eventually starts decaying, so it'll be less likely to brought out. So if you want to have stuff that's up-to-date and current, constantly being searched, that always you know, comes, comes to the front. So we've got a bunch of different types of retrievers here that you should go around and play around with and, and add them into your chains and just see how these kind of retrievers work. They're fairly simple to implement and for anything other than simple queries, you need to start thinking about how you're actually going to, to query your vector database. So start thinking of it as sort of like SQL, right? With an SQL database, you don't tend to pass in super, super complex SQL statements right? You don't tend to do for loops in your SQL statements. You don't tend to do analysis in your SQL statements, right? You just do simple, loads of simple SQL statements, and then you bring that data into your application, and then you do the analysis in your application. So you need to start thinking of these vector databases in the same way.